rains and pours, everybody. I don't know what the hell was going on. Uh, what we're here, we did it. You know what I did? I opened the Thursday Thick of It stream. This is what happens. You know, I try to, um, Tigo, I don't do the best job of pre planning everything, right? And the, I always forget why I don't do that. Uh, and then this week I said, you know what? I'm going to set my whole week streams up. This is what I this I've done this before. I've opened the I don't know why it's so simple. I could just read and it would be fine. But this but is all, why I don't do but, it. I appreciate you trying to take, but like I messed up here. I thought, you know what? Let's try to do something special, make Green Bean's life easier. We're gonna do this whole the last stream before the draft extravaganza kind of thing, and it all blew up in my face. This is why you don't take on responsibility a day after surgery, guys. Don't do it. You yeah, hopped up yeah, on meds. Yeah. There's no point in doing it. That's right. Tigo's all buzzed up, everybody. Yeah. Tigo's jammed up. That's what's I haven't going even on. taken off my hospital bracelet yet. No, you, you know what's funny? I went to the hospital today. I just took it off. I said, why? I said, my wife, why do you tell me I'm still wearing this? She goes, because it's not my body and I don't care. <laughs> there it is. Took it off. There you go. Uh, well, guys, so this is Armchair GM. We have a nice, fun night planned for you. Um, Tigo and I are going to, uh, because this is our last time doing this show together before the mock next week, I will be dry or before the draft, I should say, um, I'm going to be driving up to long Island for the talking jets draft party. One week from tonight, the show will still happen, but Tigo and I won't be together. So we're going to do dueling mocks tonight. That's what we're going to do. So I have one set up. And Tigo, you said you emailed me yours. Yep, right? Is the that email that you okay. sent to me when it was when it was going to be on my end, I just replied yeah. to it. Nice. Okay, so I have access to that email, which is good. So uh, here we go. I'm gonna. So Tigo, let me let me ask you this: How do you feel about this draft? Is this your now? What we're about to look at here is this your prime draft? If 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 you had say over every pick and everything fell the exact way you wanted it to, this is how you would do it. Or did you let the sim as you went on kind of dictate in the same way that a draft would do to you? You you have your sights on somebody, but guess what? They took them. That kind of a thing. I, I, I did that for the first part of the draft. The first half of the draft, I really went in this whole, this is in a perfect world, what I would have wanted. <laughs> but you get to a certain point, specifically with our like day three picks, where it's just like, dude, I have no idea what these day three guys are going to be. So there's no point in sitting here resetting a mock draft over and over and over again to try to get the perfect day three picks. But for days one and two, I really did try to say this would this would be, in my opinion, an ideal draft scenario, an ideal draft situation if everything fell the way that it did. Now, there are some positions that maybe you can like switch it in and out and do different things, but I thought we walked away in my draft with a ton of value at every position, at every area, and just knocked it out of the park. Um, but yeah, there's only one pick that I would swap, and I'll explain when I get there. Okay. And the guy that I wanted was taking a pick early. And I wasn't gonna reset the yeah, whole draft yeah. because of, yeah. because of that. <laughs> but the the guy that I wanted, the guy that I was like, this is the guy that I zeroed in on. He was taking one ten instead of one eleven, and I was like, Argh! I'll just explain it. Yeah, right. I get it. I have some of that too. Uh, I did like five in a row, four in. I was trying, and and I had another one that I was like, I said, you know what? I'm just gonna send the first one I did. It's close. It's close to what I wanted. Um, the draft doesn't fall the way you want. And, exactly. and you have to remember that. Now, the truth is, is that my draft, I really could have gone a few ways. I'm not as locked in this year as sometimes I can be like, you know, like for a good example is like the Brock Bowers people, they're Brock Bowers or bust. I yeah. don't feel that way. Some yeah. years I do like, this is the guy this year. I really would be happy um, if the Jets decide to take Brock Bowers, I'm going to be happy with that. Obviously, it depends on the rest of the draft, but just as far as pick 10, if they end up landing Romo Dunes, I'm going to be happy. If they take, you know, uh, an offensive tackle, I'm going to be, I'm going to be like, yep. I'm, I, you know, so I'm a little more open this year, Me but too. this is the draft as it stands today. 
uh, very, very close to the way I would like to see it go. And I will also explain. I want to welcome Travis Preheim to the Talking Jets OnlyFans. Welcome aboard, young sir. It is good to have you here. Enjoy the emojis and the super chats that come with it. Uh, also, you have access to our Discord. Uh, but we are going to dive right in. I want to thank everybody for being patient tonight, though. I, I love you guys. Uh, I'm excited about tonight. Tigo and I have been talking for a while, and it's, as it started, we just we weren't there. So uh, <laughs> it's one of those things. So first thing we'll do is we will bring Tigo's draft up. Now, I'll put a poll up there. I'll wait a little while, and we'll put a poll. I want you guys to vote and tell us which draft you would prefer. So at the end of the stream, we'll kind of collect your thoughts, everybody in the chat, and we'll see uh, where we land. I already know what you're going to pick. You're going to you're going to totally support Green Bean. I just have a feeling I'm how good I am. At this. Uh, but all right, so let's bring Tigo's mock up. Here we go. And Tigo, there we are. So uh, talk about it from the beginning. You it looks like you might have a trade up top. Yep. Yeah. So I think the the, the first thing that I honed in on when it came to my draft strategy is um in round one i would really like a starter you know i want a guy that week one is on the field and impacting the level of play at a high level and romo dunze just fits the mold of a guy that's going to come in week one impact this team in a positive way he's going to eat up the x spot which is exactly what we want which frees up garrett to be used utilized way more uh, effectively and efficiently and then when you bring in whenever he's healthy mike williams and you can put him at the z at the y you just have this this group of guys now that you can really put anywhere on the field. You want to put Rome in the slot as a big slot, do it. He becomes a, a contested catch phenomenon for the New York Jets. Like he had a 75% contested catch rate at the NCAA level last year. Guys, most people, you're considered an elite contested catch guy at like 60%. He had 75% contested catch rate. So the moment I saw the wide receivers go and we got to the Atlanta pick, I said, I'm going to go up. It's not going to cost all that much. And I played around with the, the, the simulator, offered them our sixth round pick, pick 185. They said, yes, we moved up two spots and we were able to secure, you know, wide receiver 1B and just get Aaron Rodgers as many weapons as right. possible. Can I can I make a small critique and I won't I won't derail your your, no, go your, ahead. your 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 flow. I have a hard time believing we're getting from 10 to 8 for pick one 185. So I'll just say that. Totally now, you're, agree. Gonna, you're gonna say something similar about my trade. I have a trade as well. So, totally <laughs> agree. I yeah, think that it is not, a little bit far-fetched to think that this is what the trade is going to look like, but the way that I I played it in my head is that it might be round the, the pick 10 and pick six and something next year. I'm willing to throw in a pick next year. And I think that would get it done. Now the PFF mod draft simulator said they're totally cool with taking round six. So I just let it happen that way, but I was totally under the expectation of, Hey, they'll take a six this year and probably a sixth next year or a fifth next year. And that would get the trade done, something along those lines. They're only dropping two spots. So wide receiver Romo Dunze is the pick that I make at eight. And then we go into day two. And the plan for day two was if I saw the value, I was going to try to go up into round two. I just never really found a spot that I really fell in love with, with yeah. coming up for a guy. Um, and I didn't really see any of the guys that were there that I really wanted to to, to go up for. I had really targeted uh, some of the interior offensive linemen um, in round two. That's where I was really looking. They all went in the beginning of the the, the second round. They all did. Zach Frazier, Cooper Beatty, like they all flew off the board. So I, I sat there and I said, you know what? Let's see how the board falls to me. Um, and Christian Haynes falling to you in the third round was exceptional value. I know a lot of people are worried about tackle and, and all of that, and, and I totally understand why, but my priority, at least personally, has pivoted to the interior of the offensive line. I like um, 
the the combo that is you know Carter Warren is and Max Mitchell as our backups. I believe in those guys, especially if they have to hold the fort for a, a short amount of time. But I don't like any of our backup interior offensive linemen. Not one of them. An AVT at guard off of an Achilles injury really, really scares me. So having a high level backup in Christian Haynes out of Connecticut. Uh, really, really enticed me, and I jumped on that pick. And this is the pick that we were talking about earlier where the guy that I actually wanted went at 110 instead of 111. So I took, I, I had targeted, I was going to take an offensive tackle, round three or round four, that was going to happen. I like the offensive tackles that are in this range. But what ended up happening is the guy that I wanted is, um, the he just, wasn't there and I'll pull him up. I forget his name. I always forget his name for some reason. Um, and that is Javon Foster, the offensive tackle out of Missouri. That's Javon you. Foster. Was, you know what's funny? I was going to say to you, I get the pick. I prefer, um, there's a few guys that I prefer. Javon, Javon Foster's Foster is the guy is, that I, is, yeah, he's one of the ones I was going to, I was going to say, you know, Blake Fisher, some of yep. those guys, but Javon Foster, uh, Missouri, if I remember, let me look, I think. Yep. Um, it's, it's Missouri. I have him up. Yeah. Yeah. Javon oh, right so there. Fisher, Fisher wasn't on the board. Cause I also like Blake Fisher, right. But he wasn't going to be there on the fourth. And so the picks that I had it available was like Matt on Calvis, Isaiah Adams, Christian Jones. I probably should have gone Christian Jones if we're being honest, but I just got flustered with the fact that Javon Foster was taken. And I was just like, what? In what world? Yeah. Javon always available here. Who took him? And it was, I was kind of mad. So I just said, screw it. I'm going to pick Matt Goncalves here. And I'm just going to say it's Javon Foster. Um, but I like this, I like this range of in the fourth round, getting a developmental tackle. There's a lot of guys here that have a lot of good upside, in my opinion, that you can get. And by doing this, I think there's a there's a domino effect here, right? I really do think that this team and this franchise really believe in Carter Warren, and I get that. He had a second round grade on him before he, you know, got hurt and ended up in the fourth round for the New York Jets. But also, I think that Max is having a hard time getting up to NFL tackle playing weight with the blood clots and the not having a healthy offseason, and he might be better served moving inside to play guard. And so you can knock two birds with one stone with a pick like a Javon Foster, a Matt Goncalves, a Christian Jones out of Texas, Isaiah Adams out of Illinois, any type of tackle, which is you get an immediate upgrade at right tackle backup, right? Because you can't really rely on Max anymore to be that guy to immediately come in. But secondly, you can move Max inside to be your, your secondary interior offensive lineman backup behind Christian Haynes. And again, it's just building up this pipeline and the depth at the offensive line. So that's what that pick is. So cross out Mac and Calvis, put Javon Foster. He has been dominant for Missouri for a long time. I don't know why people. I like him. I, I, I love Javon Foster. Yeah, He's like one him. of my favorites this class. And then the last day two pick is Theo Johnson out of Penn State. Guys, if you have not watched Theo Johnson tape out of Penn State, the tight end, he is really, really interesting he's got all of the, the the projected upside that you want he needs work he, he he needs all this stuff like that but he's six six i think he's 270 pounds he has it's just yeah. plus athleticism plus size he, he he played in a very effective penn state offense and as tight end three it's just about competition right i don't want to just give that job to kenny aboa i want to just give that job to zach Koontz. let's bring in a guy who has some upside who can really push and compete for that spot because I feel comfortable with tight end one and two. And hopefully this will get the Brock Bowers boys off my back because Theo Johnson, I think is a really, really good tight end prospect. And then around seven with the last two picks, I just, I just took a cornerback and a running back. I have no information on Josh Wallens, uh, Josh Wallace or me Williams, like at all, but it's just, just get depth. That's kind of the way that I was looking at it. Um, I was looking at possibly going an interior defensive lineman. The guy I like to take in the seventh round all the time is Gabe Hall out of Baylor. Uh, yeah. He's generally available there. He wasn't. And so it's just, again, it's the last two picks in the draft. Who knows what these are going to be? But I think this is where you go your defensive players, in my opinion. This is when you should go your defensive players. You want an edge project? Take him here in the seventh round. You want an interior defensive line project? Put him here in the, in the second round. I don't really like 
the idea of drafting a running back all that much in this draft. I'm not a really a big fan of any of them uh, in terms of the positional value where we could get other things. I think that there's more value at other positions that we could use. So if you want to take a guy in the seventh round, just go get him kind of a thing. So that's my draft again. I like it. Days one and two. I, if the draft played out like this, I would be a very, 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 very happy Tigo. Um, especially if we swap out Mac and Calvez with Javon Foster, like this is a, um, the video would just be me praising JD. If I, the, the, the post draft video would just be like, man, he knocked that out of the park. What a draft. Oh my God. This is insane. The jets to the super bowl. Ah! It would just, it'd be yeah. unhinged content for about a couple, for a couple days. So, all right. Now everybody there's Tigo's draft. So you have Romo Dunze uh, at pick eight. Tigo traded up a little bit. He got a steal of a trade. So if that happened already, he's got brownie points. Uh, he makes sure he gets the guy he wants. He feel I think he fears uh, he won't make it to ten. So that's good. Yep. If you if you if that's your guy and you can get him for pick one eighty five, you do it every day of the week. Uh, he sees at seventy two gets Christian Haynes, very very solid, uh, great pick in my opinion. First two are 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 real hits. Uh, Concalva is like you said. We'll say it's Javon Foster. That's great. Theo Johnson, I like Theo Johnson, don't like the pick. Um, I hear what you're saying. I just think, hey, Kenny Abo is going into his fourth year here. He's earned the 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 re-signing. He's tight end three. Our tight ends one and two are locked in. And I just feel like it's a, it's a wasted opportunity at pick 34. If we brought him on, I do like the player, though. And I think uh, in a year or two, he might even be tight end two. Uh, so that's fine. But Josh Wallace, like you said, I don't know anything about Josh Wallace or Mayan Williams. Me neither. Uh, so I would give your draft a C plus Tigo. That's where maybe a B minus. I like it. I wouldn't be unhappy. It's better than so many drafts that the Jets have pulled together, oh, yeah. uh, in my opinion. But I'm about to show you what a what a what a true master class looks like. Okay. And I didn't even do I I couldn't even do what I wanted to do. I have some rubs. So, but there it is. Tigo, uh, solid draft. And uh, let's get that off the screen for now. And here comes the other one. Where, let me, let me close this down so I don't get confused and open yours again. All right. So here we go, guys. All right. So I also started it with a trade. And, and, and here's how it goes. Um, the Raiders were calling. This is how it's going to go too. I want you guys to know this. I have, uh, very, very strong feelings about this trade back that the Jets are going to orchestrate. There is going to be either a JJ McCarthy or Michael Penix little fest where teams are realizing it, it's down to 10. I don't have to get into the top five. It's down to 10. I got to pay. But it's it's in a it's in a range where I'm comfortable paying to move up from where I am. The Rams are going to be calling, the Broncos are going to be calling, and the Raiders are going to be calling. The Raiders offered their third round pick. We were talking with them. We told them that the Broncos are offering their third and fourth, and they're a pick up. So you're going to have to beat that. Uh, the Broncos don't have a second, so we can't get that. And we're telling them, look, the Rams are trying to blow our doors off right now. They're trying to offer a second, a third, a fourth. We're okay with sliding back to 19. So you're going to have to pony up your second. They say, okay, we'll do that. If you can give us a workable depth receiver, we say, no, we, we like Jason Brownlee. No problem. We'll throw Jason Brownlee. And can you make us feel better with a seventh round pick? No problem. There, we got too many picks anyway. We'll throw you 256 and Jason Brownlee. They're great with it. We get pick 44 because of the competition for the valued position of quarterback. That's how it's going to go. So with that slide back, I am enamored with the, the idea of drafting a guy who could theoretically back up four positions on the offensive line with the history that the Jets have, this especially our recent history of offensive line issues, 
No matter who goes down, this guy is a viable option, especially as the season progresses. We get into game six or seven, and the left guard goes down. Troy Fatano could fit in there. Or let's say Morgan Moses uh, uh, you know, uh, needs a week off for whatever reason. He twists a toe. Fatano can go in there. Let's say we're at week 13, week 11, and our left tackle goes down. You have your choice. If you like Carter Warren, that's fine. But guess who can slide right in there? Troy Fatanu can also do that for you. I love that idea. It gives me flexibility with my later picks um, and changes my mindset. So I think the opportunity is too great to pass up on. I love Troy Fatanu. I don't like him necessarily better than some of the straight up like a Joe Walter um, or um, – I, I do like Latham uh, more than you, but I anyway, I like Troy Fatanu. We got our second. We get we get Troy Fatanu in pick 44 for pick 10. I'm totally happy with that. We gave up Jason Brownlee and a little and little little sprinkle of sugar with two 256. Now I here, will interrupt here just a second, yeah, just like you sure. did for me. Yeah. Jason Brownlee in a seventh is worthy enough to justify going from what should be a third rounder to a second. And no, no, no. I that's got not even part of the truth. That's just us being nice. We didn't even need to do that. They asked. We said no problem. It, it was the it, competition. And I got and I got some heat for giving a second a sixth for going up for two. Brownlee is an undrafted free agent, sir. Yeah. <laughs> Who has a year of NFL experience and is is a depth wide receiver. Again, the trade isn't the the candy for the trade isn't Jason Brownlee. We threw it in to help them feel better about it. The competition we were going to get, we were going to take the third and the fourth from Denver. We were going to take the second, third and fourth from the Rams. If you want to beat them and come up and get JJ McCarthy or Michael Penix, or whoever it is that you're targeting, you need to give us your second. They'd say, Hey, we're fine with it. We're going to give you the, the, the second. So that's the way it goes. Remember people overpay for quarterbacks. Uh, and that's, uh, it happens every single year. So, um, I'm comfortable with it. I get it. I'm with you. I hear you <laughs> loud and clear, but I believe this. All right. This is what I believe. And if worked properly, it can happen. It happens every year. Uh, so then here's where it gets shifty. So because Troy Fatanu has the flexibility that he does, I would generally want a wide receiver or an interior offensive lineman here. That's what I would want. But guess who's sitting there? Safety one uh, on my board is sitting there at 44. He's the only hole on our entire defense. And the guy can play free safety. He can play strong safety. You can slide him in the box. He's a heat-seeking missile. He's got great coverage skills. He knows how to track the ball. He's uh, intelligent. He's everything you want in a safety. And if either guy gives us problems, he can slide he, he can slide in and take care of that for us right away. He's our safety of the future. Joe Douglas, the the you know the whole thing that he doesn't want to use capital on a uh, on a uh, safety. He has used a third round pick on a safety. He has paid somebody, you know, not the top free agent contract in in uh, for a safety, but, uh, a nice rich contract in Jordan Whitehead for two years. So he is willing to invest this year with it being the only hole on the defense and the fact that we got it for free and still got our target in Troy Fatanu. It gives us the flexibility to add Tyler Newbin, the safety one in the entire draft class, uh, right there at 44. He's for free. We got him for free. The way I look at it is, hey, would you trade Jason Brownlee and then pick 256 for Tyler Newbin? I say, yes. Yes, I will do that for you. So then that takes us to our natural third. Uh, now, I could have gone a couple of ways here. I love Malik Washington. Um, there's a, There was a few there. I forget who was there. Xavier Worthy was there. I, You know what it was? Lad McConkey slid there in this draft. He's not going to be there. It, no. What happened was the Chiefs took Keon Coleman, which isn't entirely unrealistic, but I do see – I don't see Lad McConkey making it to 44. If he makes it out of the first, he's going in the first four or five picks yeah. in the second round. Um, so I just don't see it. So I, so I chose not to do it. And because we talked beforehand and you predicted that I would do it, so I couldn't do it, Tigo. Fuck that. I said, Tigo said, you're going to take Lad McConkey. You're going to trade back, get a second, take Lad McConkey. I'm like, ah, I can't do that now. But I, so anyway, 
Uh, I did like him there, but I don't think it's going to happen. So I took Tyler Newbin. Takes us to the wide receiver target of Malachi Corley. I love it. I like to call him a poor man's Brock Bowers. We got him anyway. That's the way I like to look at it. The type of production, the type of impact that we're going to get. Might not be quite to the degree, of course, but we're going to get that similar yard after the catch ability, hard working, hard running, good hands, all that stuff. Malachi Corley in the third uh, is uh, is fantastic for me. Again, I could have went a few ways. I, I chose Malachi Corley. Now, like you, I was eyeballing some of the same guys. I reached a little bit on, on their board but I don't think it's a reach at all to take I Christian agree. Jones right here. I think Christian Jones is a slam dunk developmental tackle for a year. Uh, put him on the back burner. If you need him to start, he can. I do believe that this effectively ends the Max Mitchell era, which I'm fine with. I liked him, but uh, it is what it is. Um, so uh, Christian Jones comes aboard. Now, I do like running backs in this draft class. I'm with you. Uh, that I don't think any first run there. I don't think there's going to see uh, that, that we're going to see a first round running back. We might even not even see one in the top half of the second, but I do see running backs getting taken. My favorite running back for the Jets and what we're looking at happens to be Braylon Allen. He was there, so I took him. I want the two yards that the hard two yards. I want him coming in and I want less wear and tear on Brees. Brees can do it. I know he can do it. I'd rather throw this sledgehammer into the line and get that six feet rather than wasting Brees Hall's legs and back and shoulders and elbows and knees. Uh, I'd rather throw Braylon Allen in there. I think he's a perfect complement to the um, to the stable. You know, Brees Hall and Izzy. Uh, he's a he's a he's just a sledgehammer, man. I yeah. I get a dirty him. get a dirty one two yards. That's what he That's is. That's right. That's what I want, and he can break it open too. Uh, if, if need be not the fastest guy in the world, but that's not what I'm looking for. So then this one I think is unrealistic, but he was there. He was my other, I was considering Jordan Travis in the fourth. He was there for me at 185. So even though I feel like he probably won't be there, probably he could, but I took him anyway. I think that's a slam dunk. Uh, for a sixth round developmental quarterback uh, behind, uh, you know, we don't necessarily have the greatest uh, offensive minds on this team per se, but we do have Aaron Rodgers and Tyrod Taylor. I think that's a pretty good uh, couple of fellas for a guy like Jordan Travis to hang out with for the next two years. Uh, so I like it. And uh, he would be the best kind of developmental late round guy that we brought in here in a very long time. Uh, so I like it. And then uh, I don't, love this player but i do like him uh he's one of those guys where you know what you guys have heard me say it before like in the later rounds we see joe douglas betting on athleticism ras scores things like that i have the opposite take on it i don't like to bet on athleticism i, it's not, I don't have no problem with athleticism but i would rather bring in a lunch pail guy here a guy that for whatever reason he's he doesn't have the speed he doesn't have the hops he doesn't have all the natural born athleticism that a lot of his peers do but for some reason he hangs nonetheless and that's the kind of linebacker that I want I don't see this guy necessarily cracking into our starting lineup ever but he's a good depth piece he's a good special teams guy a good guy to have working on the team He's and and he may surprise you. So at pick two fifty seven, Mister Irrelevant is uh, Eddie Ulafoscio out of Washington. So uh, there it is, man. There's my draft. Not you know if I just made one up off the top of my head, it might be a little bit different. But this is pretty damn close uh, to what I would what I would be putting together if I was the Jets GM. Tigo, it's an interesting draft. I I will say like again, if I had to give it a, a if like. If it came down to this was the draft that we had, I'm not over the moon about it just because like we didn't get a, a, a week one starter impact player until round three, you could argue, right? And it's one of those things where it's just like in a all-in year, I, I want to go all-in. I want players that are going to play, see the field, you know, and that would be my argument there is just, I want them to see the field sooner rather than later. I don't want insurance plans. 
That being said, you can Troy Fatanu can legitimately probably play all five positions on the offensive line. You get he, he is a he is this class's um Elijah Vera Tucker light, if we're being honest. Uh, except he doesn't have the short arms that Elijah Vera Tucker had. And right. so I totally get the infatuation that a lot of people have with Troy Fatanu because if you have an injury anywhere along the offensive line, he can come in and he can immediately play. So I totally understand the idea of taking an offensive tackle. Let's not even call him an offensive tackle. Taking an offensive lineman in round one. It's just a matter of, I I want a guy who's going to be impacting the field week one. On snap one of week one, he's on the field. I don't want him holding a clipboard. And for all of the people that are like, oh, he's going to start over Morgan Moses, or oh, he's going to start over uh, Simpson. Like, that's nice that you think that. But the Jets have never shown us once that they're going to put the rookie in over the over the veteran, especially a veteran that they just brought in, because we could have put one of those those dummies that they use for practice against the defensive lineman out there for Lake and Tomlinson, and he might have been better than Lake and Tomlinson last year, and they kept him in all year. They started Connor McGovern over uh, Joe Titman until. Connor McGovern got hurt. And even when Connor McGovern got hurt, they rather they put in Wes Schweitzer in. And that was because Joe Timmon is in a right guard and, and all of these different things. They're not going to bank on the youth when it comes to the offensive line or anything on the defensive line. I agree. So, I agree. Troy Fittano, week one is on the bench. Yep. So here's the thing I'm totally with you. And I can appreciate that. I, I can appreciate that sentiment that you want. You want a player that you feel confident is going to come in and be able to have an impact on this all-in year yep. week one. That's yep. what you want. That said, if you have – you could you could argue that Malachi Corley is going to give you exactly that. He's instantly wide receiver three. As a, I mean, you can argue the Lazard, Aaron Rodgers thing. I, I get it. But there's going to be – he's going to be on the field. Now, would Romo Dunze play more? I, I think so. But – He's going to be able to have that impact, as is Braylon Allen. Braylon Allen's also going to be used uh, right away. Again, of course, yeah, maybe yeah. Not the star power, you know that 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 elite level that you're talking about. But Malachi Corley's coming right in, and he's playing. I would argue Tyler Newbin can beat out Tony Adams, uh, and and we'll see the field um, in in some of our packages. So he'll be playing. And the Troy Fatanu thing, I'm totally okay with the idea that he doesn't play week one, but the last five games of the year when everybody's injured, we have Troy Fatanu. I'm a much bigger fan of ensuring that we're on the field that, you know, that we have good guys on the field in, in late November and December. than I give a shit about September. That's how I see this. You know, it's like, it's a long haul and you know, teams that start slow and finish strong, they make the playoffs. The teams that come out of the box hot and fizzle, they don't. Even though there's the same amount of games, it's just it, winning in December gets you in, man. And it's no, just it, yeah. the way that it goes. It's just, again, it's this, it's the belief, or at least, again, my belief is always going to be that this coaching staff is they're going to, like, week one, I get what you're saying. Tyler Newbin should be able to beat out Tony Adams and or Chuck Clark. The staff won't do it, though. That's my thing is, I don't think that that's what they would, I don't think that's what they would do in that situation. And while you're right, Malachi Corley absolutely comes in and is probably wide receiver three. And I hear the argument, oh, uh, Alan Lazard and uh, Aaron Rock. I'm done with him. I'm done with Alan Lazard. I'm I'm cool. <laughs> I'm cool with if if you would have added another wide receiver in this draft, I would have cut Alan Lazard. I would have ate, ate the money. You can't, I would have ate no, the money. You can't. I, I don't can't. want him on my football team. He gave up on the team. He gave up on the franchise. I'm done. I know it's not realistic, but that's my thought process on him. And I think Robert Sala is in that same kind of he, he basically did everything but tell us that he's here for one more year. They're cutting him next year. Yeah. Um, but my thing is, and, and the way that I looked at it again, this is a really nice draft because you address the offensive line. You address the interior of the offensive line with Troy Fatanu, which is exactly where I think we need to address more than offensive tackle, because I don't think AVT holds up with the Achilles injury. I know it's scary. 
especially at guard. That's why early on in the process, I wanted AVT at tackle. It was for his own health. AVT at tackle, I think, would have lasted him at guard. I'm very, very worried, and Troy Fatano answers that call really, really well. Christian Jones comes in and immediately backs up at your right tackle spot, which is great because that's what Christian Jones was at Texas. He played right tackle and only right tackle, which is awesome. Um, it, it's just one of those things where it's just the argument can be had that we didn't get a starter until round three. And the upside of Malachi Corley is he can, his projected ceiling is wide receiver three. That's his projected ceiling. All I want. All and I, want. I am, I don't, I don't want that. I want to be a, I want to have a wide receiver room that rivals that of the, the Cincinnati Bengals when they had it. I want all of the weapons out there. I want us to be able to go spread out wide, go and put Brees Hall out in the, in the field and, and, and all of these things and just get as many people open as possible. I think people fail to realize that Yes, an offensive line helps a quarterback, and wide receivers getting open helps a quarterback, but having a good quarterback is going to help the offensive line. Even with all of the injuries that we had in the offensive line last year, the offensive line offered up two and a half seconds of protection on average last year for Zach Wilson. That is bang on league average. Aaron Rodgers' career time to throw is 2.25 seconds. 2.25. So, so he's he getting the need, ball out. He doesn't out. even need the luxury of all the time our O-line was providing last exactly. year. Exactly. And if we look at the video <laughs> and the stuff last year, yes, there are totally clips of the offensive line getting blown out. But there are two guys that were on that offensive line last year that are going to be back. Two. And that's AVT and Joe Titman, And that's it. Everybody else got replaced and everybody else got an upgrade. And so... Again, week one, I'm way more into, I want guys who are going to be impact players that are for sure 100% going to be impact players, not what if a guy goes down, then he can be an impact player. Because in in my mind, the same probability, the, the same likelihood of Tyler Smith or Elijah Vera Tucker going down is the same likelihood of them playing all year. And then Troy Fratanu doesn't play a single snap and we don't have anybody behind Garrett. And that's my biggest fear. I get it. Is I really, Garrett do, goes down. Well, and then there's the, right. Then there's the argument. We also are depending on an, an often injured Mike Williams yes. and Garrett Wilson, knock on wood. He's been fantastic. But if we lose Garrett Wilson, instantly you're looking at an injured injury pro Mike Williams and Alan Lazard. So I get it. And Gibson and, and, uh, and in this instance, it's, it's know, a bunch of undrafted free agents and Mike Williams right. is, and you're hoping that Mike Williams knee holds up. And that's the way that I look at it is like, I think we are much more needy of a starter in the wide receiver room than we are in the offensive line room where you can get depth. You know, you're going to get a couple weeks out of Tyler Smith and AVT, at least assuming that they have an injury and that is more than enough time to get some of these young guys up to speed. And that's how I think about it. Yeah. Again, no, I get it. I do. I can appreciate that. And that's what I'm saying. Like if the Jets decide to go with Odunze, with Brock Bowers, with, you know, uh, and, you know, uh, just a, a weapon up top. I'm in, I get it. I'm in favor of it. And the truth is in, the, in a recent podcast that I did, when I removed my own feelings and looked at it just objectively, the bigger hole right now is actually wide receiver than it is offensive tackle yeah the you're just letting your, the jets is, fear take over yeah, well it's not jets fear it's learning from your mistakes it's foolish to think that somehow this year is going to be anomalous oh yeah of course because we've brought on uh a guy coming off of shoulder surgery another guy who hasn't uh he's played an average of eight games a year for the last nine um and depending on avt you know, I mean, look, I'm I like the signings. I support the signings. I think they were good for the crop that was out there. I think we did as good as we could have hoped. That said, the idea of thinking that for some reason they're all going to stay healthy, I just don't see it. I think it it is foolish not to have a high caliber guy ready and waiting right there for the first guy to go down. He's up. And I and the fact that this guy can supersedes the desire that I have for an Odunze's value over a Malachi Corley's value, especially when I'm going to sign Tyler Boyd anyway as soon as the draft is over. <laughs>
Uh, but and so- that's <laughs> and that's my thing too. It's like no, but like what you said. Now let's say that's the situation that happened. You go out and you sign Tyler Boyd. That is a completely different situation. Correct. Right. And we can't. Now really, this is a whole yeah. different world yeah. that we're living in. In the yeah. same way, Green Bean, let's look at my draft and let's say, what if sign. that happens? You sign David Bakhtiari. Right. Uh, now fair. it's a completely different draft. Completely now you're like, draft. oh, we we had a plan in the works. There is something here. Oh, we are we aren't just relying on Carter Warren. And to be fair, I know that I am much higher on Carter Warren than a lot of people are. And that's where I look at it and I go, I don't need an offensive tackle in round one, let alone round two. We have Carter Warren, and I believe in his skill set and what he can do, especially given a full offseason to actually get healthy and work on his craft. And I don't think people realize how good putting a young kid around Tyler Smith is going to be. Tyron Smith, sorry, Tyron, not Tyler. Yeah, okay, yeah, I was just going to, okay. Around Tyron Smith. Dude, the, Tyron Smith is a master tactician. He is. Master. When it comes to the hand fighting and the what he sees and how he reacts, it is second to none. The only reason he's not the best left tackle in the NFL is because one Injury. injuries and Trent Williams exists, right? Like that's it. <laughs> yeah. Right. Like well, that's look, it. I'm right with you, Tigo. So look, this is a this is my tweet from earlier today. If the Jets have a handshake deal with Bakhtiari, take your favorite weapon. If they have a handshake deal with Boyd or Chark or somebody. Take your favorite offensive tackle. Simple pimple. Yeah. Now and and exactly and well, but we can't, especially us out here. We don't have that information, so we're basing it on the information that we have. So I can appreciate it. That was you know. So we we won't govern our thoughts by what theoretical hypothetical could take place in the you know after the draft in the future. But that all said, look, you're you're logical. Everything you're saying is logical. Now some of the players like I've shared, maybe not the guy, but logical. I understand. Uh, going that route. And if the Jets decide to, I like it. I would be remiss to point out, though, safety is a need. It is, defensive tackle is considered, hey, you know, we need to bring in a fatty. Fine. You know, you talk about uh, cornerback. Oh, it's a sneaky need because we don't know the story with Reed or whatever. Fine. You could talk about that. Safety is a need right now. And don't tell me that Tony Adams is good enough that he doesn't deserve competition, actual conversation, uh, competition, not, right. not Jarek Bernard Converse. And I don't know what he is, but that's the whole thing. We have no idea what he is. He's a he's a guy who played uh, more cornerback at the end there uh, going into the draft. They decided to make him. They're doing the Jason Pinnock experiment with him. Fine. I'm, I, I like it. I'm in favor of it. He's not a guy that I'm penciling in and not making a move because of. So the idea of getting – and I get it. I was going to pick a wide receiver there, guys. I, I, I'm i telling you, that was my target. I saw Tyler Newbin. I believe if the Jets see him there, he's he's safety one on many boards. Not every board, but he's my num- He's my safety one because of his versatility. Uh, it's too good to pass up, especially when I'm, I already know, and the reason why I'm comfortable with taking a tackle over a wide receiver or whoever uh, in the first round is because I'm really comfortable with the role that the third round wide receiver class crop is going to be able to come in and contribute. Dude, if a guy like, let, let's say this, let's say you get Romo Dunze and he comes in and he has 42 catches for six, six plus and three touchdowns. Is not is that not a successful rookie season behind Mike Williams and Garrett Wilson? Fucking slam dunk success. So you don't think Malachi Corley can, can can come in uh playing out of the slot and get himself 35 to 40 catches? So it's similar in what we're looking for impact-wise. Can Romo Dunze give you more? Yeah, of course. And I'm not de- I'm not debating that. Um, I'm just saying the impact that we're looking for this year, barring the tragedy and the and, and the injury from the wide receiver position. That's the thing is barring the tragedy. But the yes. difference is the difference is Garrett Wilson hasn't gone down yet. And I need of to, of course I, not I stop fucking saying that. Let's just not mention him. We'd not, yes, we'd, sick of it. but my thing is this is let's talk about the guy who has gone down every year for the last couple of years. And Mike Williams, if he goes down now, you need Malachi Corley to not give you 500 or 600 yards. You need him to give you, 800, 900 yards, and now instead of getting you four touchdowns, he now needs to get you 
seven or eight touchdowns. And yes, you can rely on Garrett Wilson, but what we've seen at the playoff level every single year is that teams that have one primary target that primary target gets washed out because in the playoffs, it plays different. Garrett Wilson gets double teamed. And now Malachi Corley is your only option because let's say, except Tigo that you can very easily shift to the Tyler Conklin, Brees Hall show and in the air, you can very, where the offensive line is, you don't, you don't have them. You don't have them. And for the, for the air attack, you can very easily go tight end heavy. You can have Garrett Wilson, Tyler Conklin, uh, Jeremy Ruckert, Malachi Corley, and Brees Hall out there. You can very easily do that and have a very successful offense. Uh, maybe not as you would prefer to it's have just, your guys. again, but, but, but again, you're absolutely right. Green bean. But what happens in the last two minutes and you need to make a drive and you can't have that package out there and you need to have three wide receivers out there and Fucking send Braylon Allen down their throat and beat him up. But that's Fourth that's quarter time. That's my point is just I think if a guy can get open, a guy can get open. And so, again, if either draft sat, if yeah. either draft happened and then you do your offseason plan is like the day the draft is over, you sign Tyler Boyd. I'm over the moon. Yeah. Right. And that's a, that's a great draft or in vice versa. You bring in Bakhtiari and just like, Oh, great. That, like it's my thing is all is going to be in the end when you need to score points and Garrett Wilson isn't an option because he's just been game planned out because he's being double covered like they did with Devonte Adams. When they were in green Bay, they just removed him from the game or like what they try to do with the Buffalo bills where they just take Stefan Diggs out of the game. When you only have one target and that target, isn't available. What do you, what do you do? And it's that's my point. biggest fear I get because it. I get and it. a, a superstar offensive line isn't going to help your wide receivers get open. The only thing that's going to help your wide receivers get open is, is talent at the wide receiver position. And the gap between Romo Dunze and Malachi Corley is, is, is pretty huge. And that's the way that it's I look a fair at it. Point. It's a if fair you point. need Odunze to go get you 1100 yards, I have way more faith that he can go do that in a year versus Malachi Corley. And let me be very clear here. I really like Malachi Corley. I'm yeah. actually on the draft two wide receivers in this draft. I know so that I you, am too. I, the so fact that that you have can one. cut Alan Lazard, but I know that's not going to happen, but I want him off of this team as, as much as possible. But like I am go draft two wide receivers, like go get the weapons. Well, but so I here's what I'll say though, about the offensive, you're hundred percent right. The only thing that can get a wide receiver open outside of schematics is the wide receiver himself. But you know what else? You know what an offensive line can do? A wide uh, offensive line can't get a wide receiver open, but you know what he can do? He can pull everybody up because they're dominating and we're just eating eight yards at a clip on the ground and they have to compensate for it. And there you go. Uh, I mean, that's how the Dallas Cowboys did it for many, many years in the, in the olden days of uh, Emmett Smith. And the dude, you had to stop him. And therefore Michael Irvin just ate your lunch. And that's the reverse is also true. If you have two guys that are eating up and they're both going to go for a hundred that game, you have to send more DBs out there. And then how are you going to stop? It's I'm, I'm, no, I get it. I'm just saying if this, if there is no down, right answer, you know what I mean? It, there is no is. right answer in this because it's just one of those things like, well, if you have two guys that are going for 1100 yards in a season, you need to stop them. Well, how are you also going to stop Brees Hall? The Jets have too many weapons, and that's a problem that I want to have. I want to have the problem of too many weapons. How do you stop all of them? You don't, so sucks to play it. against us. All right, Hennessy, we'll do some super chats here. Hennessy, thank you, buddy. He says, an unreal, as unrealistic as some of these guys may be, there are players that fall every year. We always see it. I can see us grabbing someone that's falling for sure, maybe even trade up like Joe loves to do. And that's what we saw with Brees Hall. It was like, okay, well, look, if Brees Hall's in our neighborhood, we want him. He was two picks away, I think it was. Maybe we didn't need to trade. Joe said, I don't give a shit. I want it. I want That's my guy. He's way too close for me not to make a move. And he jumped up and did it. And I can see him doing that as well. Um, I will say, I don't know how unrealistic a lot of the guy. I mean, you know, like a Jordan Travis, I don't see him making it to the sixth. I, I really don't. The truth is, is I could see Malachi Corley going a bit before 72 uh, as well. 
Um, but these are the ranges. These are realistic ranges. I think Tigo's ranges were pretty spot on. Uh, I think my ranges are pretty, pretty, pretty good. Um, mm -hmm. But like you said, every single year I go, how the fuck? How is that? It's the fifth round. How is that guy still here? But you never know what happens every year. It, 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 happens. it happens. You know, teams start, you know, making choices and everybody loves the guy, but he's everybody's number two in when they're on the board. And all of a sudden you got a guy who's a top 30 pick. He's sitting there in the top of the third. How the hell did it happen? Um, like a Jakai Polite, everybody. It happens too. But thank you, Hennessy. I'm looking forward to seeing you uh, next Thursday. And I saw I, I saw that you bought the tickets, dude. I'm I'm really excited to meet you, my friend. Truly. And I will say this, Green Bean, we did need to go up for Brees because Houston was going to take him. That was 100% happening. Yeah. Do you remember the video of the Buffalo Bills fans? When they, they were furious. Dude. Oh, I, I still like, we're getting free ball. We're, um, dude, they lost. Kyrie Lum. It was, yeah, it was great. And then uh, the next was, day when they got the, when we got and it's like, and of course the jets got him. Why did it? Oh, that yeah, video that lives great. rent free in my brain. That was one of my favorite videos of all time. Uh, e boogie checking in. Good to see you. My friend bean bagger stream beaner. One of the best says green bean is right. That's why we hang out so much. E boogie, you know, you're my guy. E boogie's my dude. Uh, bearded checking in says my wide receivers this year. Odunze. Uh, Mitchell, Coleman, Wilson. I want that big body to be opposite. Well, who's who's oh, Mike Williams? Okay, and take that role next year. Slot is easier to fill. Hey, man, look, dude, I, I'll, I'll tell you something to you. You may or may not know this about me. The truth is, is that if I could have four, six foot two plus wide receivers, I would do it every day of the week. Now, that's not to say I don't see the need for the shifty dude, but I am a big fan of pounding the living shit out of people with physicality um i love wide receivers that can block i love wide receivers that you're both jumping for it guess what they win i like that i like contested catch guys which is why romo dunze is one of my favorites as well uh what do you think of his list here after odunze ad mitchell and keon coleman and the rest how, how do you see them in the first like okay uh, i like the big bodied x's romo dunze ad mitchell like those guys are I like I like them. I would put Brian Thomas in that range. While he's not maybe a big bodied X, he's got six four two oh five. Like he's big. You know he doesn't play big, but he's big. Ad Mitchell doesn't play big, but he's big. Um, I would just also throw guys like Troy Franklin in there six three one ninety. I, I hope that um, was one. So listen, that was the real. I know I said McConkey Troy Franklin was sitting there. And instead of Tyler Newbin, I was this close to taking Troy Frank. I would have all oh, green bean. Your draft would have been, I would have, I would have said, <laughs> throw my draft out of the throw it away. If you literally just swapped those two, kept everything else the same and just swapped those two, I would have been like, yeah, so I can, I could live with this. Yeah. I, I almost did. With I wanted to change it up. Um, um but yeah, but I love the big bodied X's. I, I just, there is something about, I, I totally understand the idea of, of, of the shifty get open quick Garrett Wilson, this new generation of receiver that we're starting to see, but like the big body X isn't going to go anywhere. Guys separation isn't King when it comes to wide receiver, you can get separation a lot of different ways and just being longer than cornerbacks. Cornerbacks aren't built like sauce Gardner. Sauce Gardner is the anomaly. Most guys are built stouter and shorter. So yeah, five ten, Yeah. 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 And if you're six three with a seven foot wingspan, and you're one on one, there's no corner that's getting to your hands. Especially, you should be strong at the catch point. So, like, I I totally look at it that way. And if you got speed on top of that, which a lot of these guys in this draft do, they just they've got burners on them. It is a, it's a deadly combo. Yeah. I like it too, bearded. You got a good group there. Uh, Wilson's a little uh, uh, significantly yeah, lower. Know. On my board, um, Same. but uh, he's big. I give him that. Uh, DLB, one Jets arm checking in. Nice happy. You know, oh, well, you know what? I got this when I went to camp uh, last year. Um, they they gave this to, this was part of the Q-tip package. So I was hanging out with somebody who's, I like to think that I'm a Jets, you know, I'm a, a well-known Jets guy. Q-tip's the real deal. When they, it was royalty. So they gave him a whole bag of shit and he gave me the hat. So this is this is like legacy from last year. I don't even know, technically speaking, if this is the updated. I, you know, I don't know if it's kinda. 
looks like the updated one, but thank you. Yeah, I like this hat. Um, and now it's our logo again. So I already have a hat. Isn't that something? Isn't that something? I don't have much left from my old Jets. All I got left, he goes, thing. this thing made it through my whole life, dude. I had this. This is original. Like, Whoa, well, that's actually yeah. really cool. Yeah, this is Did back. you put that on your car too? No. Yeah, oh, okay. it may have been. It may have for a very short time. It was. I think it was on my Mitsubishi Eclipse that I had years ago. So when this was the logo, this is why I bought it. And somehow it made it through my whole life. And it's here. I don't have any of that stuff from when I was a kid. I don't have anything. The only thing that survives that I have that's old, and it's old to me, is my dad still has a Keyshawn jersey. That's it. That's old. Yeah. That's Can I it. Get this thing, Tigo. Yep. This you got to wear the, that. You got to take that to the draft with you. This is original, man. This is the real deal. I had this. I was wearing this thing when I was five years old. You can't Sorry. take the, actually you should put that in a box and never open it and for the rest of your days, but Vinny after. Testaverde. I had Vinny Testaverde yep. sign. Isn't that, isn't that nice? So all right, everybody. Well, let's close the poll. The big the big news on uh how the poll ended up. Let's see what they got here, Tigo. I haven't looked at it at all. Uh so let's get to it. Where is it? There it is. Okay. So 70% Tigo went with Bean and 29% were with you, buddy. So not mm -hmm. bad. Not bad. 29% with Tigo, 70% with Green Beans. About what I expected, if I'm being honest. I I know, you know, I, I know how it is with me. Uh, but uh good shit. So I hope you guys had some fun, Tigo. I enjoyed this. Um, th this was good. I'm sorry that I won't get to hang with. You. I'll probably maybe I'll call in on the ride. Yeah. I'll, I'll I'll check in uh, when I'm stuck in traffic in DC or something like that. I'll I'll call in and say hello. But uh, so next week we don't know who the co-host will be, but Tigo will be here. I'll be driving up for the draft party, guys. We are in the final stretch. We got the Thursday thick of it on Green Bean Jets fan tomorrow with Buffalo Jets fan coming to hang out with us for the show. Uh, it'll be his first real appearance on a Green Bean show. We had him on one time, but it was with other people. So this is the first Buffalo Jets fan appearance uh, when it's just him. So I'm excited. I'm really looking forward to it. And don't forget, tomorrow at 3 p.m., Matt O'Leary and Jeremy right here on Talking Jets for the reality check. Uh, don't forget, Tigo. Talking Jets with Tigo. Link is in the description. Don't forget to support and follow Tigo, of course. And if you haven't subscribed to this channel, please do. Smash those milk thumbs, that like button on the way out, everybody. And we will see you, where is it, next time.